Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday night coffee talk. Uh, as per usual, a little snafu here. So, but, uh, so anyways, I see Carrie is here, Sharon is here, our awesome best companion ever and channel moderator Attila is on. So let's see, and, and Brenda is here. Oh, exper experimenting with the Kiwi Chow Core as a creamy. Oh, the sweetened are unsweetened. Uh, let's see, and Jen Delaney is joined and Miss Perfectly Imperfect Keto. Hey, uh, Renee, good to see you. Let's see. Uh, let's see, what else? Goodness, now it's jumping around on me. Oh, and Gigi's here. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, we got everything going on here. And so tonight I did. I put in the topic that we were uh, going to make an old-fashioned bulletproof coffee. And hey, good evening, Patty. Nice to see you. And uh, I see that Carrie put in some little facts here about the uh, David Osprey. He said he found the recipe while in Tibet. Yep. Uh, that he had low mold coffee beans and two tablespoons graphite butter and two uh, teaspoons of medium, medium chain triglycerides. And uh, so, yes. Oh, hey, Keto Simple. Good to see you tonight. I was just posting on your page because I was looking up that pizza place for my trip to Gen Con. Oh, and Marion has joined us. Let's see. I know, I also can't believe it is Sunday already. Uh, and uh, I don't know how long we're going to be on the stream tonight. I'm like fraught. And it's so silly. My kid is 21 and uh, I have to take them to the airport tomorrow. So we'll be leaving at, uh, I'll be leaving here and about 3.45 and getting them to the airport by about 4.15 so that they can catch their flight out at 6.30. And I know they're a grown man at 21 years old, but it is their first time that they are getting on a plane and going out there all by themselves. Uh, there are visiting friends and uh, uh, all, a bunch of friends from all across the places. And they, instead of coming to the Midwest because they've uh, been here to Columbus, they're going to DC to do sightseeing. And you know, I know, I'm like, they're an adult. And I'm like, but my baby, their first time on a plane all by themselves. So oh, it's, you know, one of those things, but I also got to be able to sleep tonight. So, hey, Jen, nice to meet you and see you here. Hey, Hungry Heath. And I'm waiting to see the warden too. I know you guys are probably having dinner soon. Oh, Keto Simple, I will let you know when I'm going to hit it up. Um, and as a Gen Con update, just to let you know, I've been talking with the Fogo de Chow there, and I cannot go. I cannot get the uh, Saturday reservation that I wanted to make. Uh, they said they've been slammed. We are working on a lot of stuff, and uh, so. And the response was really a lot of maybes. Like the only person I had for sure was uh, just Jen Delaney. So uh, Jen, we're not gonna do Saturday Fogo de Chow in August. I apologize for that, but uh, we'll do something good while we're at uh, Keto Palooza. So let's see. Hey, good evening, El Ella Strange. Let's, uh, good to see you tonight, Lisa. Let's see. Oh, a warden is ear hustling. Okay, that makes sense to me. So, okay, uh, so anyways, bulletproof coffee. Let's get it made, and then we'll talk about facts, and then, and so I apologize for the live stream tonight, but we're gonna have tons of obnoxious noise, because I said we would make egg crepes, uh, the egg wraps, using the whole eggs, which I have here, six eggs, so, but let's start with our bulletproof coffee. I'm going to toss in. Bulletproof coffee is a very simple recipe for a uh, eight ounces of coffee. You want one tablespoon of butter, and we'll talk about why butter versus or other fat uh, versus that. But here's the important part to the bulletproof coffee: is the MCT oil. Now you can use coconut oil, that's fine too. However, 
The uh, trick to that though, there's some differences between coconut oil and MCT oil. MCT oil is refined from coconut oil and coconut oil has MCTs, it's, you know, but the oil is going to give you the better. I am using a whole tablespoon, but let me tell you, don't start out. If you've never had bulletproof coffee, don't start out with an entire tablespoon. Start out with a teaspoon because it will hit your digestive system and uh, I will tell you, it will uh, impact you. You start slowly, ramp yourself up, start with a teaspoon and a teaspoon for several days, then bump it to a teaspoon and a half, then two teaspoons, then finally your tablespoon. I see sometimes, I'm gonna make room on the counter and just set this back here. People get kind of, uh, you know, they, they jump right in and they're like, I use two tablespoons because more is better. More is not always better. You want to find that right uh, there. And Brenda says she has to use the powdered MCT and just a quarter teaspoon. Yep. And, oh, Hungry Heath, I'm not using no hot sauce in my coffee. Anyways, you put those two things in there. And now we're where we're gonna have noise. Uh, you gotta get your whip down in here. I use too big of a cup. I use a blender and then pour it into my container. You just gotta get your hot coffee in there. And that is what's gonna help get your butter melted and the MCT emulsified. And Carrie, with everything else that you have going on, it is so lucky that you don't have problems with MCT oils. Let's see. Oh, and yeah, so there it is. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I don't know. I, I see something about tasty wraps, but I've missed some. Oh, the MCT into the wraps would probably make more sense than into the coffee. MCT oil, MCT, uh, Hungry Heath MCT is hot sauce. Uh, moist clown tears. Uh, Air Fry Annie likes my containers, but I'll tell you, this is just the beaker from my uh, V60 that we use all the time. And this is the measuring class that comes with the Cuisinart uh, immersion blender. Anyways, I just give that a little bit and then uh, hit it up at the top a little bit to froth that butter up a little more. I have no idea how that sound is on the audio, but I hope it's not too bad. But I want to give it just a little bit more to fluff it up. And that is it for our bulletproof coffee. So we have finished with the coffee for our coffee talk already. But you can see it comes out nice. And it gets like a little bit of a foam on top. I'll bring it around so I can show you. There you go. So you can see how it gets the froth on top from the butter. And that is all you do to make your bulletproof coffee. Sometimes people make very elaborate drinks or because they don't uh, do well with the MCT, I'm just going to top the rest of that coffee in there. Uh, they'll have just butter coffee or butter and egg coffee. And I just want to be clear that that's not technically bulletproof coffee. Fatty coffees are also delightful, but they're a different product. Bulletproof is specific to the MCT. Mm. And it comes out really nice. I love it. Hey, Visual Keto. Nice to see you tonight. So, and Carrie says the coffee looks good, even though he is 527 days to no coffee or caffeine. Now the trick with that is you can make bulletproof anything. Uh, if you want to use MCT and butter and whip it into your chicken broth, it will give you the same effect as the coffee. You can make it with uh, a lots of other dishes. So uh, I, just, I do especially like it in broth sometimes. And um, also, uh, teas, herbal teas are nice. It's really comforting this evening. I guess I was really in the mood. 
So I have so many things to talk about, but let's do two things. Let's turn on my crepe maker, which I did lightly coat with some butter. Thought there was something on here. I'm not sure. I think it was just butter because all I did was get greasy finger. So I'm gonna turn that on to heat up. I have six eggs uh, and I have two scoops, AKA uh, 20 grams. A scoop is 10 grams of unflavored beef gelatin. I toss that in there. And for a flavor profile, I pinched off some uh, rosemary. It's called barbecue rosemary. Uh, barbecue rosemary has a longer, fatter leaf than a lot of rosemary. So uh, I guess, oh, there you, you can see it against my shirt. It's pretty big. So I just pinched some of that off of my plant. And I just decided I wanted to flavor it up. And then we add some salt. So let's see. Oh, and then uh, Carrie says my eggs are, are wrapping. So, and I'm being generous with the salt. Um, let me see, uh, probably about uh, one and a half teaspoons. Uh, you want the salt, I'm gonna add a little extra. You can be as generous as you want. And for this recipe, for these egg crepes, credit goes to Indigo Neely, who was blending the gelatin and the eggs together. Uh, started off with egg white powder and then or regular egg whites. There's been a lot of variants. And I will tell you that using the whole eggs does give it a slightly eggier flavor. However, not enough that it deters me and I love eggs. So, hey, the warden, welcome. Uh, but what you actually need to make these eggs is your eggs and your gelatin and your salt. That's it. You can, all, you can add other things into it. Like today I'm adding my rosemary because I wanted to. And uh, Sharon is asking if I've used the toasted gelatin yet, and I have not. Uh, it's supposed to seem like a lot of effort and for not really something that I needed to worry about because I've got this down. I have my little crepe tools, which you can use any number of things. And here, let's make some really loud noise. Now, I know that they say you can use a regular whisk and whisk it in there, and I've done that, but it takes a long time and I am too lazy. So real quick, we're gonna have my Nutribullet go, but it will be fast, I promise. So hang, uh, plug your ears for a moment. <laughs> Set off the dog alarm. It's all right. The blender freaks him out. So you get a little bonus from Dyson. And basically, uh, to me, that noise was so much so worth not having to spend six or seven minutes whisking and whisking and whisking and then still having a, a and still having a gelatin lumps so now we're all set oh yeah and uh, Attila does mention sometimes Dyson pre barks like he knows we're getting ready to use a blender or like the fridge has been left open a few minutes it makes it beep uh, yeah, that makes him flip out. I almost took a drink of my eggs. Now, I like to let it sit and some of the, for the foam to settle down a little bit. And give the gelatin a little bit of time to, uh, come together. And let's talk about these though. What's great about these is that they are, uh, perfect for wraps. They can be a little fragile, but they don't have to be. They do have um, a very nice protein profile. And that is something that's gonna be important when we talk a little bit more about the MCT. And just Jen Delaney says, everything freaks Dyson out, and that is true. He is the president of the Nervous Little Dog Club. Uh, it's just how they are. And I laugh, because sometimes uh, Pomeranians come up on like uh, the shorts or TikTok, and they are all the same. They're like stupid cute, absolutely adorable, but then they do something like they clip a toenail and they're like snarling little beast or they're flipping out over the over nothing. And that's a Pomeranian. And the warden now also wants coffee. 
Uh, it's a delightful, perfect time for it during Sunday Coffee Talk. I'm just saying. Mm. So, let's make one of the, let's make some crepes and get them set aside. I've got a cooling rack on my stove. Just so you can not see it there because it's just little thin lines. But I wanted to show you uh, how simple these are because they came up on the Friday night feast uh, because they were making these really awesome uh, brisket uh, roll up enchiladas. Now, one thing I'm gonna say, I've poured this into a nice little circle. You can let this cook a little bit if you want, or you can thin them out. And I do spread it out to help with the cooking. Also, I like a, a, a nicer, thinner wrap, which is uh, basically the difference between the, the wrap and the crepe is the thickness. And you're just gonna, it also helps it cook as you spread it out because it's taking the raw batter from the top and pushing it around off onto the edges and it helps with the shaping, the whole nine yards. So, we're gonna give this a minute to solidify up and there will be a point here as I am running this around and spreading that suddenly it gets kind of like a, almost sticky. And you know that that's where it has been cooking and you are gonna stop spreading it around because that you're going to basically just be ripping it up. So. The next thing I find is that I come over here and I just give this a rinse off so that I'm not putting pre-cooked batter onto my new crepe. And that is usually about the right amount of time I need to make this flippable. And I did spread it out a little, I just squish it back together. And that is it. So that was so easy. And, oh, Kerry is mentioning that he's got his Rubio's uh, chai tea while everyone else is having coffee. So, nice. Oh, and Air Fry Nanny finally got this to show on her computer and not the TV. That's good, because, I, I don't know, the TV seems really uh, large. Let's see. I'm just scrolling back a little bit. Uh, oh, uh, Air Fry Nanny is hunkered down in her dark room. Uh, maybe you're maybe not hiding. Hey, Rick Wynn, good to see you. Uh, Renee says, bulletproof, but not 10 feet tall. True, true. And then Hungry He says, speaking of MCT, his Moist Clown Tears hot sauce, he's participating in a neighborhood garage sale this next weekend, and he plans on having the bottles set out to sale. Perfect. Anyway, so this is all the cook that this needs. So let me just lift this up and show you. Soft, pliable, the whole nine yards. You can see, you can bend it, we can roll it. And that's everything. I'm just gonna set it here on the cooling rack and we're good. That's the whole thing for the wrap. So they're super easy. You can do a regular crepe pan. You can use a skillet. I think that skillets are a little bit harder though to get down in there for the flipping. And But I love this electric griddle. We've used it a lot on here. I cannot speak enough about its virtues. And unfortunately I can't remember the brand but I can post it in the comments afterwards. Mm. Really digging the uh, MCT coffee this evening. Let me get here. Oh, Carrie says when he can afford it, he's going to get another bullet blender like this one. Uh, the Nutra Bullet does, in fact, rock. It's it was well worth it. When we got it, um, we got it um, off of an ad where it was buy one get one, and so I we uh, got one in went in with a friend. So let's see. Let's go ahead and we'll pour another one. I'm going to use this hand. And then we'll go through some comments and start talking a little bit about some of these things. So you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not, but basically, oops, that was way too much batter. This one may be a little too big and we're just gonna run with it. I'll let it cook a little bit and just get situated. And then I'm gonna spread the batter out. 
I know we just went over this, but I figure we'll do it twice so that you can see how easy they are. And even like this one where I have made it a little too thick, we're just gonna cook it a little longer to get it taken care of. I've pushed too much from the center, so let's bring some back in. I know a lot of people struggle with these. Basically, all you have to do is touch the surface. Don't dye it, don't, don't dig it in real deep. You just touch the surface and it just lightly pushes it around. Just enough to bring some to the edge. And a lot like pancakes, it gets little bubbles up towards the top. And you just give it a minute to uh, just start cooking through. And like I said, I've made these a little thicker. You can totally spread it out papery thin, but then they're prone to tearing. You know, put the you rinse the cook batter off before we do the next one. So let's see. The warden wants coffee. What do we got here? I'm trying to catch up. The comments have just been like very weird. So let's see. Oh, and just Jen is asking what brand gelatin do I use? I use whichever organic uh, beef gelatin I has the best price at the time. A lot of time it is uh, Amadine, and then sometimes it's now brand. So, oh, and uh, Renee says she got her uh, bullet on clearance at Walmart a few years ago for 10 bucks. Nice. So, oops, slice right into it. And yes, this griddle is nonstick. So, you know, the blasphemy of it all, nonstick, but it's just perfect. It's, I, I love it for everything. And uh, Sharon says we have the, uh, she has the smoothie bottles for the Vitamix. So those were, were perfect for mixing. Yeah, my Vitamix is too old to have uh, uh, smoothie bottles. If I ever decide to spend money on a new Vitamix, uh, I would definitely get one that had all of the things so I would like to get the one that can take the smoothie containers as well as the food processor but uh, mine is strictly the very very old school one blender that's it Lisa says I make these look so easy uh, she may need to make some because her store was out of egg life wraps yesterday and how to store them uh, once they cool on the rack, I just fold them into a triangle and uh, put some parchment and throw it in a baggie. So they're very easy and if, when I want to heat them back up, I just pull it out and I uh, put it in the, uh, in the microwave with a little bit of uh, moist water and boom, all set. we will give this a stir because now it's getting extra thick. Yeah, and if your batter starts getting extra thick, you just give it a stir and don't even worry about it. It's okay because the heat will melt the gelatin. Uh, that's part of it, the gelatin uh, melting and getting stretchy. I'm going to make two smaller ones since I made two large ones. A little more. So... But like I said, you can see how easy they are. Where did I put my spatula? There it is. We'll just, and like I said, because when you use the whole eggs, they do have a slight little egg taste, but it's very mild. And so, but if you don't, I will tell you that egg whites only does tend to stick a little bit more. So you have to be more careful, it's slightly more delicate. So I, and I just prefer having the egg yolk. That's a, it's a personal preference kind of thing. But again, I want to extol the virtues of the uh, genius of Indigo Neely, who was the first person I saw mixing the gelatin and eggs. So, and you can see, this is just like stupid fast. We're not taking a long time or anything like that. Oh, and Sharon says that uh, they have it because when uh, Steph went through a time of uh, smoothies, he had to have them, and now they're hardly being used. That's normal, though, don't you think? I think that is the case for a lot of stuff. So 
So let's see. This one came out extra nice and perfectly round. And Carrie says, I'm egging you guys along. And yeah, so now that they have cooled, I just want to show you, you know, it's not like they get stiff or anything like that. This is the first one. You can see it's bendable, pliable. It's not tearing up. Now, so, you know, is it as sturdy as a regular tortilla? No, of course not. But like I said, I folded it in half. You've seen me tossing this one around now. So probably it's the one I should eat. So I'm going to put that on my plate. And this one that I'll store later. I'm just going to toss there. Peel this one up. And like I said, I made these pretty big and very thick. If you make them thinner, you'll get more out of the recipe. Uh, I know that indigo neely tends to get uh, uh, six or six out of the just egg whites, uh, but they are definitely a lot smaller and a lot thinner. And if I am making them in a more of a crepe fashion versus a, a heavier duty wrap, actually. I'm gonna make a one last teeny tiny one. You can get uh, I, I I normally get six, and today I'm getting four or five. I don't know. What do I got? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm gonna get five because I made the first few quite large. So, but as we chat, you can see I'm chatting here and paying attention, and well, sort of paying attention and it's not really hurting anything. So these will be great because I can also use them in the morning for uh, breakfast burrito wraps or just as a snack. You can see I made some little dots here. I'll just clean those up, put them on the edge. It's very, very flexible. So. But yeah, like I too run into the time where the ones that I buy at the store are unavailable. So it's definitely easy. Let's see. Oh yes, and Renee's reminding everybody to hit the like button if you would be so kind. That does help out quite a bit. And Air Fry Nanny is saying, so not much color on those. No. I mean, there is some on, it's, it gets a... I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see. It's a little bit. Oh, I don't, almost dropped it on the floor. So, but yeah, no, it's mostly egg colored. You can see the other side. One side always gets a little bit more brownie. But, so yeah, the color is very, it's, it's egg colored. So, but the gelatin doesn't get real brown and you don't want to cook it so long that, that it gets browned because then it will be overcooked and not as pleasant to eat. So there we go. And then we'll just make my one last mini one and then we can uh, put my wrap together for my tuna and talk about the MCT. Oh. Where's my new piercing? You can't see it from the camera. It's here on my nostril, this side. So it's just a, and I, and I got the same style. I've got a flower here. It's a little five piece uh, emerald. And then, so that matches my little five piece emerald here. I know you can't see it from that distance on the camera. So, but yeah, I just love it. I was so excited because what, uh, the, uh, my friend owns one of the tattoo and piercing shops. Well, he owns a series of like three of them locally. And one of the specials that they run is on your birthday with purchase of jewelry, you get a free piercing. So I always love to go and get my free piercing. Uh, the piercer that they have, he's one of my favorite people of all time. So uh, I just, it was just perfect. So, let's see. I always like to talk to my friends though who are used to me and then yeah, I work in a very corporate place and sometimes 
when now I know that I am really good at my job and obviously I've earned my reputation but sometimes we meet with some very uptight sort of people in our industry and uh, they're always like uh, extra shocked by my piercings and tattoos and everybody I work with is very used to it by now so it's always hilarious when they're uh, extra surprised. Oh, and uh, Renee says her nostrils seem to smart a lot more than the septum for some reason. Oh, you know what? Mine's been okay, but I didn't have problems with the septum either. I'll tell you, the thing that gave me the most trouble uh, was, well, two was the, uh, the orbital on my ear. What the heck, man? And part of it is because I've caught it on things a lot, but it just didn't want to heal. And while I got my nostril piercing, I had them swap the jewelry out from the little gold piece I had to a stainless steel uh, with a little green. So it matches all the rest of my loops, which is fine with me. And while it still has to heal again because it was really irritated from getting, uh, um, from getting caught on my outfit, uh, it's already like even the minute they changed it it already like kind of got a whole bunch better and it's almost better now and so I think I might have just been sensitive to the gold which I did not know was a thing I've had gold in a lot of stuff before but evidently not in my ears uh, Air Fry Annie says she's nervous about getting her second ear hole pierced let me tell you, let me get you a referral. I know that you uh, probably are going to be surprised by this, but you need to go to a professional piercing shop. It will be a thousand times better and, and don't definitely don't getting, do not go and get a uh, gun piercing. Hey, just Jason Keto. Nice to see you tonight. So. Oh, and uh, Renee says the nostril was tough because she kept catching it when she washed her face and would fall out. Felt way better when she replaced it with a tiny hoop. Yeah, so I got a uh, flat stud, so it's really on there. Uh, so far, I haven't caught it like I do my ears. Anyways, so this is our this is our food here, our bulletproof coffee, our egg wrap, and I left my tuna in here. So let me just grab that. made my tuna salad ahead of time so but I did put so here's the thing with tuna salad I just buy I buy uh, the tuna in the can I got the uh, perfect catch is what this one is albacore don't overcomplicate it that's the main thing for a really delightful tuna salad all you need is your tuna drain it off uh, chop up your kosher dill pickle, like cut it up, don't buy relish, and uh, salt, pepper, and mayonnaise. That's it. So like, that's why like tuna salad does not need a recipe and people put too much in it. I'm gonna eat the rest of this too, I'm hungry. But I don't wanna overfill my wrap. Well, maybe I do, but I'm not going to. So let's see. Oh, and uh, Renee uh, is agreeing with me about going to a professional piercer, not to a shop piercer with a gun. Yeah, the, the reason that is is because the guns rip your skin, and the, whereas the hollowed out needle is a much uh, more refined process for the piercings. So let's see. So, but yeah, so here we go. You see, I just fold it right up. Maybe I can put a little more tuna here at the top. It's all right if it spills out. Smush it up a little bit. So, there we go. Oh, just Jen says she's got a run in a minute. Her college roommate is driving through Louisville, so they're meeting for a late dinner. Oh, that sounds nice. I haven't talked to some of my college friends in a while. I'll probably need to reach back out. Those of us from our literature department, you know, we suffered a lot together. So, and you probably want to put a little toothpick to, or something to keep it together because it will unfold. But otherwise, there you go. 
it's a, it's a perfect delightful wrap look you can pick it up like a burrito the whole nine yards oh air fry nanny says she prefers light tuna versus white doesn't seem as dry for some reason that's because it's a lower end tuna and if you need a moister tuna you can just add more of the mayonnaise to it uh, air fry nanny that's another reason to go to a professional they will look at your lobe and they will recommend and tell you the right thing uh, they will if you have a scar they'll tell you if they can re-pierce it there or if they need to realign it they'll center it properly it won't uh, slip uh, you'll feel a slight pinch it, I mean it's a piercing it hurts it hurts if you get it with a gun but it goes very quickly and uh, Marianne says she was so so sensitive to the gold in earrings that she had to let them close she never found any earrings of any metal that she didn't react to so uh, you might try uh, stainless steel, niobium, or titanium. Hey Dennis Williams, good evening. So willing to mix sardines in with the tuna. Um, I prefer sardine salad by itself, not mixed with the tuna. And I've really just been wanting tuna lately. Hmm. Hmm. It's perfect. I'm, just, I'm very pleased and I just love these. I eat them on the regular. Oh, and uh, Carrie says he's got a, a two small tats on his chest. And uh, also is, can only wear white gold. I didn't know there was a difference in uh, the reaction between white gold and uh, regular gold. Make sure I turn this off. I did. So. But, uh, and then Rickman says they uh, treat sardines the same as tuna. Yeah, that's what I do. Hmm. One second. Sorry about that, I took too big of a bite. And just Jason Keto said he had lots of ear piercing in his teens. It was a thing for guys in the late 80s. Oh, were you punk? I, I, I asked because, you know, I was a, uh, in the 80s, I was goth. So, you know, you have to picture it, how dumb, I, I, there's nothing wrong with goth. I love goth and I would still be very gothy, but living in the desert, wearing your long sleeve black turtleneck and all your black with your pasty makeup and uh, you know some days it was near dying out there in the heat for my gothness and maybe I could have made some different choices in my clothing <laughs> but uh, especially if you'd be like out there and it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit and you're wearing a big long black coat over your big long black uh, uh, turtleneck that was uh, that took some uh, commitment Now, speaking of sardines, I'm going to address this before we get into some bulletproof coffee facts. If you don't like sardines, or for that matter, if you don't like eggs, stop punishing yourself trying to do any of these crazy diet fasts. There is zero reason. I am mortified when I read people saying that they uh, want to lose their weight fast and so they're doing Dr. Baza's sardine fast and but they have to eat over the sink because sometimes they're so disgusting it makes them throw up that's disordered eating don't do that it's okay there are other things you can do and the warden agrees that goth needs more summer looks you know what it does now though like check it out i'm just saying nice sheer sleeves very uh you know black jeans don't say anything i bring both shoes because gay but, uh, you know, and, you know, and of course I've got my tattoo and everything. So, you know, I'm just saying all I needed was my lipstick. But uh, it's no good for uh, fatty coffees. So, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, and Miss Perfectly Imperfect Keto says so she needs to get some better earrings to wear daily. daily. She has two piercings on each ear. Uh, most of her earrings are professionally style when she is working on site. Uh, yeah, uh, you can't see them. I just have have little loops for on the wear. And the warden says she saw some really cute goth shorts. Oh, I'm uh, interested in that. So uh, shoot me over a link if you have one. So back to the Bulletproof, the whole reason we're having this talk. So the Bulletproof coffee, the MCTs, uh, medium, uh, medium chain triglycerides. So part of this is that it does help with ketone boosting. It does help with your focus. It also helps with your cardiovascular. And it is a boost uh, in general to help you get into ketosis faster as you dump your carbohydrates. The other thing uh, I will tell you, if you want to just deep dive into MCT, look for Dr. Eckerd, M uh, just search on YouTube, Dr. Eckerd MCT. Uh, he has a huge, very, very, very in-depth video. And he'll say all of the things that I'm saying, but like uh, 10 levels deeper, we'd need like a whole hour to talk through it. But one of the things I can tell you is why MCT versus just your butter and egg fatty coffee because fat and protein, you do need protein together because, and so, but I'm eating food, but regular fat takes longer to work through your system. And the MCT, the way it is broken up, it uh, doesn't have to go through your, lymph, your lymphic system first. So it's a quick, fast hit. Uh, not quite as fast hitting as exogenous ketones, but pretty speedy because it's a very simple cell. And so it uh, bypasses the lymphic system. It doesn't have to get that inspection of like, let me be suspicious about this and make sure that you're okay. It's like, no, that's tiny. It could just go on through. And so it boosts everything. Um, And that also helps with uh, something we've talked about before, which is uh, the reason it helps with fat loss, which, which I almost don't want to talk about because I want to stress how much that I don't want to be pushing about weight loss. If the reason you are having bulletproof coffees is because you want quick weight loss, then you shouldn't be having bulletproof coffees. Uh, there are so many other reasons to have them, and all of it is surrounding lowering your blood sugar levels, uh, working with your electrolytes to rebalance and recover from uh, uh, the, uh, if the imbalance that comes with the uh, water flushing from uh, going keto initially or when you have heavy exercise, uh, muscle recovery from exercise, uh, boosting your ketone levels for things like uh, seizure control, or helping with your spasticity or uh, uh, muscle recovery from heavy exercise, uh, spasticity and uh, spasms from uh, if you've got an immune disorder like rheumatoid arthritis or MS. Uh, it's very easy for people to get carried away with Bulletproof Coffee. You saw what I put in there. Just one tablespoon MCT, one tablespoon butter. That's a 200 calories. Uh, and zero carbs. Well, 2.8 carbs for the coffee. So really low, but people get carried away and they start adding uh, keto caramel sauce and then heavy whipping cream and then whipped cream and uh, then butter. And then they're like, I don't like the MCT because I got diarrhea because they use too much. And suddenly they're having an eight or 900 calorie drink and not adding enough protein to balance that out to help your body uh, process all of that uh, fat. So, and then also they're having more energy than their body knows what to do with, which feeds back into the whole storage system. Uh, yes, fat is energy. Yes, you need fat. Yes, you need protein. No, you don't need carbs, but no matter how many times we say, eat until you're full, if you don't have a full meter, 
uh, your body still has limits on how much fuel you actually need for your body. So you have to find that balance. Um, Oh, and Miss Perfectly Imperfect Keto says, yes, uh, unfortunately, some like to get back into fad diet mentality with some products. Yeah, uh, and I'm very, very against that. And lately, a lot of things have been very diety, and it's been very upsetting to read some of the things people are doing to themselves. Don't punish yourself with food. Yes, sometimes we have to do hard things. You know what? Yeah, you're right. I did a 30 days of BBBE while I was troubleshooting something that was making me sick. So... <laughs> Oh, Dennis Williams says, deep dive, Dr. Benjamin Bick Bickman has a large following of non-coffee drinkers. However, his bulletproof coffee is extremely small. A mere 10 milliliters of coffee, 10 milliliters butter, and 10 milliliters HWC, less than 200 calories. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, also the bulletproof part is the MCT combined with the butter. That's your short fat that bypasses your lymphic system, so it's the fast, quick hitting. And then the long-term fat that will go through your system and then uh, also assist. So you'll have fast fuel that you're going to burn through quickly, then your long-term fuel that's gonna go through your system. So you do not have to have it in coffee, have it in broth, I'm telling you. So uh, have it in broth or have it in your herbal tea. But also, if you don't need it, don't have it. I have rheumatoid arthritis. It's been flaring with the breathing difficulties from the air, the high pollen counts, uh, and the high humidity. Like if you go outside for a little bit, um, yeah. So it's, it's just, and also uh, to be honest, my diet has been kind of not uh, as good as it should be. Uh, I've, ha I've been indulging in uh, diet sodas, which seem to be very bad for my rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm just cleaning it up. And also, I have seizures and I cannot have my ketone levels dropping. It's just not going to be okay. So here we go. Yes, Carrie, bone broth would be perfect. So let's see. Oh, that reminds me, since Renee is here, uh, while we don't know that it is, you might check in with Heath, he was talking about having pains in his shoulder and the more he described it, it was making me think he's got things uh, tied up up here and we could do some stretches, but you know, obviously I'm not anywhere where I can go visit and like, you know, poke back here. Uh, I just heard it all and I was like, oh, these are what I've been studying in school. So for those of you who don't know, I've, uh, I had started a quite some time ago and got my fitness and nutrition uh, certification through OSU. I've been going back with the idea that I will learn uh, enough for some sports therapy, that kind of thing. I don't do keto coaching. Not that I wouldn't ask somebody if they wanted me to help them with some exercise plans, but uh, there are stretches you can do when you tie this up that will help. And the reason I said that is because he said he's got pain uh, radiating in his arm. He didn't say in his video if it was going from uh, sometimes he moves his hand and it goes up or if sometimes he just moves and it shoots down, which would be two different exercises. But uh, since I saw you, I was like, oh, maybe since they can't go get the MRI or other things, maybe you might have some gentle stretches he could test out. You know, obviously you do a little bit and if it causes uh, a bad change, don't do that. But And Hunger He says he thinks he overdid it a little with his DDPY. Right, well that is one of the things, you know, overdoing your workout can tie up this uh, muscle and nerve bundle that are right here. So there are stretches you can do to release it, but it's going to depend on uh, which one it is and how it's, how it's uh, going. Uh, let's see. And really only in your left forearm. Yeah, so like I said, these are things. It's probably unrelated, but I just thought, you know, while I was, I was watching the video and like everything you said was like very textbook. 
So, you know, obviously you would need to check with your neurologist to make sure it's not MS related, but a thousand percent, it sounds more like a stress up here. Uh, there's like a, so many spots here that can go wrong, like five or six different things. But yeah, so I tend to only work with, uh, you know, first of all, I just have my regular corporate job. The reason I'm doing schooling and stuff is purely just for me. I have myself four clients only and they are all people with some uh, with a physical disability so we uh, do adaptive mobility uh, and uh, general exercises so because they can't do some of the same things we do athletic wise etc etc oh and hunger he says nine ninth day of bbb and e and his pain is going away um, not even really pain just a numb feeling that yeah I saw your video but yeah as for and I think you're talking about the rest of your pain that you were having before you uh, went on a BBBE to clean everything up and uh, uh, go through your reintroduction I agree with you I think you're right that the diet sodas were bothering you but you'll find out 100% during reintroduction that's what peels everything off the covers Oh wait, is that right? I said that wrong, but you know what I mean. So, MCT will help with other things too, but it does help actually uh, because it's a fast processing fat, it will help with your appetite. So, I'm gonna take another bite here. I've been, I've been dying for my dinner. Mm. chat amongst yourselves hmm. and hungry he says yes yeah, self-sabotage I am so familiar with that oh no Carrie it's all right that you asked about your lower back I can't necessarily help you with it because a I'm not a doctor and there are uh, so many things that can be down in your back your lower back again it could be like 50 things, maybe not actually 50, but it can be like about 20 different things, uh, very literally. Uh, even if you have arthritis, it could be something else. So unfortunately, uh, without being able to, to look at it, uh, yeah, you could, it couldn't tell you. So uh, if you have some place that has a local pool though, a public pool, it's probably worth your money to go and pay the fee to go and just like relax in the in the water for a while uh, do like some light swimming that doesn't really hurt anything and the water helps a lot so, let's see but I just wanted to extol the virtues things we don't talk about anymore because it's not the current trend but it didn't go away and it has its place I, I remember when it was uh, trending and people were acting like it's a, it's a whole, like, oh my God, you can't keto if you don't have bulletproof coffee. And it was like, oh my gosh, you need to relax. But also there are the time and place for just such a thing. And Hunger, he says, he hopes that it's just not a full on MS flare up. You know, honestly, I really tend to think that you might be having an MS flare, but we'll find out. It also could just be other things. Dennis Dennis says he's curious as to whether there are worthwhile doctoral doctoral dissertations on goffness. Ooh, now I want to look that up. If there's not, there should be. That would be very interesting. Oh, and Carrie says he uses the hottest water on his back in the tub, and that works. Yeah, if it's arthritis, that'll help. But if it's not the arthritis and it's something else that actually could be, uh, uh, yeah, it, unfortunately, it's one of those things you got to see in person. Oh, but now I'm really thinking about this dissertation. So here's another thing I've been talking about, though. Like when I mentioned, like I myself have been a little bit sloppy lately, which is really bad because of my seizure uh, disorder. Uh... Hang on a second, Miss Perfectly Imperfect Keto. I will uh, talk to you. 
uh, about that in a minute. So, uh, I lost track. Oh, the dissertation, the hot tub. Oh, all the encouragement. So I've been thinking, uh, because I have been, and let me know what you guys think. You know, when I did my 30 days of BBBE, we posted my food every single day. And while I'm not sure I can upkeep every single day, I am thinking about doing, doing that again uh, between now and uh, Gen Con. So not 30 days, but uh, at least a couple weeks of just straight up old fashioned keto. I, and just wondering if that's something that people would be interested in seeing that someone who eats keto every day, not, not a fast, not a, not a special restriction, not a, uh, just straight up old fashioned, uh, you know, induction of Dr. Atkins or original, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the goat of keto food plans. If you guys would like seeing that. Uh, just someone, you know, just like a daily blog, you know, 15 minutes of like, here was my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, and Sharon says she would like to see it. So I've been thinking about that, and I would probably start that on uh, Tuesday if I, uh, if we think that's a good idea. Yeah, but Hungry He says diet sodas, evil seed oils, and a horrid bed on the cruise was a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. And Renee says, yeah, that she thinks that would be refreshing. So, yeah, I thought it would be a little bit different. And uh, Air Friday Annie says, trying to get back there herself. So, all right then, let's do it. And Hungry Heat says, yes, please. All right. And don't worry, it won't impact Cheese Friday because you can have a little cheese. Uh, so, given that. Oh, and uh, Renee says she is inspired by my meals and knowledge. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And Miss Perfectly Imperfect Keto says she would love that. Great. Like I said, I just been seeing like fast after fast after fast, uh, a sardine fast, uh, an egg fast. Not that I have a problem with egg fast. I love eggs. I think I'm like the only person who can do like the five day egg fast. And then on day six, be like, I really would like some eggs for breakfast, but I'm not doing the egg fast anymore seems crazy um, but I just want to stress don't punish yourself with food you don't have to do uh, crazy plans or starve yourself in order to find better health and Renee's asking if I have an Aldi I've got to try the scorpion gouda they have oh Julie noted I will see if ours has it they don't always have the same cheeses as other places but I will take a look because I love scorpion peppers I love them. They're, uh, I feel it. Yes, they're, they give you that zap on your tongue, that electricalness, but they also have that high fruity taste, and I dig that. All right, everyone. By the way, I have my cup here. It's just sparkling water. So. Sorry, I took a great big bite there right here at the end. I'm going to get ready to head out because I want to make sure I get a good night's rest because I'm sure tomorrow morning is going to be very stressful. And Sharon says uh, BBBE was good and bad for her. The bad was that it really triggered binge eating and drive-by fridge eating when not hungry. And Renee says she's seen all the she visits an hour away for a couple months now. That's a good sign. I'll double check it. And Hunger He says uh, the diet sodas are no good for him. If I think he'll have an issue with Zevia, I don't know. Hopefully not, but you won't be able to tell until you uh, go through that reintroduction phase. And that is uh, always, uh, it's so hard to pick and choose what you want to reintroduce. My recommendation when you reintroduce, the first thing that you want to try is, to, is uh, just a plain goat cheese. Uh, I'm just saying I think that followed by probably, no, I'm going to go with the goat cheese. I think the plain goat cheese is probably the easiest thing to reintroduce. It's low in lactose, high in fat, the whole nine yards. Easy on the stomach. So, all right, everyone, I'm going to go, and I will see you all later this week. Bye-bye.